All right, what we're going to look at here before we start our life cycle of stars is I want to just quickly take you to Canvas, show you how you would get to the life cycle of stars lesson and lab, as well as the video you're going to see after this, where you do a balloon model demonstration of the life cycle of star. Um, the balloon model demonstration is designed for the end of this. So what I want to take you to now is kind of what you would do with your students leading up to learning about life cycle of stars. It's a really cool activity. So once you get to Canvas, you would go to Courses, go to Files. Takes a second. Uh, once we get to Files, um, one of the next things that we're going to take a look at is we're going to find Unit 8, which is Celestial Bodies. Um, then we'll go to Lab Activities. And now that we're here on the lab activities, we're going to scroll down um, the video that you're going to see of the lab later in the at the end of this video is right here, uh, the life cycle of stars balloon model. But what we're going to look at right now is the life cycle of a star full lesson plan. So go ahead and click that. And it's going to take you here. Um, there's two things that you could do at this point. Uh, the first thing you could download it. Um, so that way you have it saved to your computer. You don't have to come to Canvas every time. Um, but I'm just going to choose to kind of go through this with you while it's on the screen. So Life Cycle Star is a fun activity for students. A lot of them tend to think that our sun is like the best star ever, um, which is pretty cool. Uh, but they don't realize that it's just a medium-sized star. And um, this is a good opportunity to look at the HR diagram because you can see it's built in right here and how... The sun falls into the middle of the main sequence stars, and then as they get hotter, they go up. Um, as they get cooler, they go down. The size also increases as you go up, and the size decreases as you go down. And you have some of these outliers here, which is demonstrated in the balloon model. But um, Life Cycle Star has kind of a quick little read right here at the beginning. Uh, the purpose of this activity um, is uh, the research create an ele electronic presentation of a stage of the life cycle of a star, and then all the students create different stages, and then they put them together to make one copy of the life cycle of a star. It's actually a really cool deal. Um, but what's cool about this is not only are they making a electronic presentation of it, but they're also making a 3D model of it using paper, glue, or whatever type of materials they can get their hands on. But they have to communicate with each other in this lab because not only are they getting their information right, but they need to know the sizes of the other groups so that their size model that they create is accurate. Um, you can see your uh, materials, uh, student sheet 2.1. Uh, you'll need some computers. Uh, obviously, it could be less computers um, if you have them working in groups two or three together. Um, you can really cut down on the amount of computers you need. Um, strain, paper model, glue, scissors, markers, crowns, other various supplies defined as the teacher to create their model. So if they want to use styrofoam ball, uh, crumpled up paper, anything like that, that's perfectly fine um, to create their model of a star. Um, continue down here, day one, uh, you're going to divide them into groups. So you can go up to six groups so that they can start off with a planet a nebula and work the way all the way up to the ending, which would be a white dwarf, depending on whether you have them doing the uh, small to medium mass star, all the way up to a large mass star, which would take a different path. Um, so you could have some groups going the small medium mass star path, some going the small uh, large mass star. Um, within uh, the fingertips, they're gonna research, they'll find information about their star stage so it could be the nebula, it could be the protostar, it could be the star, it could be the red giant or supergiant, it could be a supernova, um, it could be the white dwarf, black dwarf, neutron star, or even the black hole. Um, each student should create four slides that include information listed on the student sheet, four high definition pictures, and two higher order thinking questions. Um, you notice that when you get to day two, you're going to use this information that you researched in the slides you created yesterday. You'll create a 3D model of that star. So day two, they're creating a model of that. Um, the students use the materials that were mentioned to make that model. 
They'll communicate with the other groups to make sure that's accurate. So day one is more the research portion. Day two is creating the model. And then day three, they'll be selected at random to present their creations. Each group will have seven, 10 minutes to present that. And that way they can go through it. You can cut that time down a little bit if you wanted to make your slides not as many slides. That would be perfectly fine as well. Um, but it just depends on what you want to do uh, for your class and how much time you have for this. But um, each group would basically come up with their slide. Maybe Nebula goes first. They present theirs and then the next part and they show their model. So as the students are going through it, you start out with the beginning of a star all the way to the end of the star. And the students are presenting and gathering information. Uh, your conclusion questions here at the end is what the students will answer. Um, maybe as they're going through this, um, I think it's a great opportunity for them to answer this as they go through it. Um, there's some teacher notes at the end. And then uh, this just kind of gets into a little bit more one more time. Here's your student sheet. And this is what the students will have. They'll fill out why the students are presenting as well as what they need to know in order to, it's kind of like a rubric when they're filling out their slides. What is it that they need to have in their slide? And this helps them to check off and make sure that that is there, okay? Um, but that's kind of how this project works. It's really a lot of fun. It really allows the students to kind of work in groups, um, problem solve, learn on their own, present what they discover, and be creative. And it frees you up as a teacher to be able to move around, help that group that needs a little bit more help, but that group that's really kind of your advanced group can really kind of go and fly with this one. Um, so I think it's a great opportunity for you to do. Um, after this, you could use the HR diagram sheet that you're gonna do here in just a moment, um, or that you did this today, and then um, before having them do the next part. But um, this is what it looks like. And now take a look at how to do the life cycle of a star balloon model.